but I was I was so concerned about uh, the part where we should eat protein and fruits. That's the part I'm concerned about so much because I don't understand why why we do why we should do fruits that have sugar, the fructose that will end up messing up our liver instead of doing the vegetables. God, God made fruits. God made fruits for reasons. Yeah. And uh, and I know the topic is liver. <laughs> but again, but again, God made fruits for yeah. But again, God but, made. But, but but fruits have good enzymes. You cannot deny this because. But the, but the same enzymes are in vegetables. Hello, doctor. Hello, Marion. How are you? I'm doing well. Yeah. Uh, my name is Mariam, and I am a nutritionist, a gut consultant. You are a nutritionist. Actually, I'm a physiotherapist. Then God put me to this way, and then I become a nutritionist. Some wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait, Mariam, wait, wait, wait. I'm confused. Are you a nutritionist or a physiotherapist? Or no, both? Actually, I'm a physiotherapist from Germany. Oh, you're a physiotherapist from Germany? Yes. Ah, interesting. So Welcome. Then I started talking about the, Then I started talking about the gut because I was interested into it. Because uh-huh. I came from Africa, and then I had bloating. Then I started reading about it, and then I started giving advice to my Somali community, to mm. my people. Okay. So then uh, I'm doing this job now for two years. Okay. So, yeah. I made it as a second hustle job. But 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 you realized most are you coming? You come from Somali or you come from Kenya? No, I, Germany. Oh. Somali German, Somali. But your your origin is in in Somali. Exactly. Yes. You did you realize that most Somalis use uh, sugar in everything, including rice? They add sugar. Unfortunately, yes. And I also realized that Somalis eat rice that has been added sugar. They eat it with spaghetti, and then they add a banana in it. What is going on? <laughs> I don't know. I just uh, I was wrong with it. I don't know. I don't eat it. And why did you say? What did you say? Uh, I preach it to my Somali people. Why not to all people? Because health is not selective. Because uh, I know, I know it's not. I know it's not. Mm-hmm. But uh, um, people, a good nutritionist is not founded in Somali community. Okay. So maybe uh, I am the like people, my Somali people. They always said I'm the I'm the genuine one. <laughs> okay. I can explain well. I think Somali people. Somali people also believe in their own. So I think you can be one person who can change the lives of Somali people for the better. But I want to know, I want, I want, I want to ask you a question. Do you think fruits are healthy? Fruits? Do you think fruits are healthy? Uh, for somehow, yeah. They they have enzymes. They have good enzymes. Okay. They have good uh, vitamins. Like which one? For example, papaya. Okay. Like papaya has good enzymes. Ananas, mangoes. It's good, it's good for the liver. Mm-hmm. And it also is good for the. Uh, um, it makes good enzymes before you eat meat. It can uh, break protein. Okay, and now since since you you are a nutritionist and you advocate for. It's not for everyone, but it's not for everyone because if people have gut issues, hmm. they should be uh, careful with foods. Only good gut can uh, can can. Uh, how can I say it in, in English? Only good gut can uh, can um, handle fruits, not every gut. What do you mean when you say good gut? A uh, good gut, I mean a good gut with good pancreas working, mm-hmm. <laughs> and liver working, and uh, gallbladder, mm. and good uh, strong stomach acid. But if, if if you have a good gut, as you put it. You you know fruits can actually cause a fatty liver, and you've mentioned the liver as one of the uh, the components of a good gut. So then, how would fruit but be healthy? You only fruits, hmm. You only you only eat you only consume fruits when you have a lot of protein. What you understand? What would most be... of people they don't eat protein, a lot of protein. The most of the people they only eat uh, uh, starchy food and a lot of uh, fruits. That's oh. not that is not good. We understand this is not balanced, uh, balanced meal. But uh, do you know that cholesterol is eighty percent is glucose, and twenty percent is uh, fat. 
So we cannot say that. Wait a minute. You said uh, cholesterol is eighty percent glucose and twenty percent fat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But in moderation, in moderation, in moderation. But uh, unfortunately, a lot of people they don't eat uh, balanced meal. Mm. That's why they have liver issues. So, so let me ask you: Do you do you yeah. think do you think our bodies understand moderation, or they just know if you've taken a fruit, they'll absorb the fructose? Whether you've eaten one fruit or three <laughs> fruits, it's still fructose. Yeah, but that's what I said. Uh, a lot of people they don't consume a lot of uh, protein. I said fruits with protein. I didn't say fruit only with like a, like you mentioned uh, rice with banana. That's too much. So, so if I fru- if if I eat if I eat red meat with with a fruit, what will be the difference? With me eating red meat on its own or fruits on their own, what will be the difference in the body? Experience with people, yeah, uh, with my patient. Uh, if they consume uh, papaya, for example, it has it's, it's low glycemic, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, if they eat papaya thirty minutes before they eating meat, they can break down protein better. But but you see yeah but you but you see the glycemic index is basically glucose not the fructose index, right? But the papaya has fructose, yeah, and fructose is converted to uric acid. That will mean they'll have issues with their joints. So you can imagine if I tell somebody to eat pap- you can imagine if I tell somebody to eat papaya with red meat, and red meat will be converted to purines that will also give you uric acid, and then you eat a fruit. That will actually be that's converted to. I said a good. That's why, doctor, doctor. That's why I said, uh, if the gut is healthy, if the person is healthy, if they exercise, if they eat well, if they sleep well, there's a lot of combination with that. Of course, I'm not. I'm not recommend someone who have liver issue and uric acid to eat fruit. Hundred percent not. Okay. Do you understand the point? Yes, I do understand. I do understand you, but I have my 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 question. I always ask. I always talk to the people. Mm. I ask them. I question them before I start giving their meals. And I know that the liver. Most of the people who have liver issue, they have sugar issue. I know that. But you see, I know that fructose yeah. will go to the. I know that fructose will go to the liver and then will will metabolize as a fat. Let me ask you a question. Why? why I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking this way. If we have a meal that is rich in protein, yeah. why don't we just do protein with vegetables? Because the same same nutrients that are in fruits are present in vegetables. The only difference is vegetables don't come with the sugar. So why don't we just do f- meats and vegetables instead of meats and fruits? Do you understand my point of view? There is. I understand. I understand. There is a lot of things you you can break down with protein, but it's also the body needs variety. Like you can give the the body a lot of things. You can have sometimes veggies. You can have uh, papaya. You can have uh, hot water with uh, with lemon to break down the protein. There's a lot of things you can do. It's a variety. Well, I, I, and as as I said, it depends on the person I'm talking to. If you have uric acid and liver issue, hundred percent, I'm not suggest you to eat uh, starchy food and uh, fructose. But most of the times, people don't even know they have a fatty liver until they are diagnosed of a condition. Yeah, and then now we go I'll to an underlying... I will ask you a question. How will, you know, how will I know that I have a fatty liver? There are certain signs they will have. They have bellies, they have, uh, bad, uh, they have bad sleep, they have constipation, hemorrhoids, they have farting, they, they can't not tolerate fat. They can they have white uh, stool or how the bones are stool. They, they, there is a sign for it. But I was I was so concerned about uh, the part where we should eat protein and fruits. That's the part I'm concerned about so much because I don't understand why why we do why we should do fruits that have sugar, the fructose that will end up messing up our liver instead of doing the vegetables. God, God made fruits. God made fruits for a reason. Yeah. And. Uh, and I know the topic is liver. <laughs> but again, but again, God made fruits. For, yeah. But again, God but made. But, but but fruits have good enzymes. You cannot deny this because. But the, are... but the same enzymes are in vegetables, whether we like it or not. As much as we want to eat the fruits, people don't eat fruits because they have vitamins. You don't eat fruits because they have vitamins. You don't eat them because they have enzymes. You eat them because they are sweet. 
That's the truth. And fruits have sugar. And you know very well, for example, if we have vitamin C in a fruit, and we have fructose in the same fruit, fructose and vitamin C have literally near the same structure. So they compete with the same receptors for absorption in the gut. And the body is not stupid. It will not take the vitamin C that doesn't give it a reward. It will take fructose because it gives it a reward of feeling good. So therefore you'll end up eating a fruit because it's sweet because of the sugar addiction. So if you're looking at the beneficial value of fruits, and then you'd rather look at beneficial value of vegetables rather than the fruits because vegetables come with the fiber, which will help you in the gut function, and they come with the same vitamins, the same enzymes that are present in the fruit. So why don't we eat the vegetables plus the protein? Why would we eat the fruits plus the protein? And also look at it this way. When you absorb that meat, you'll end up getting the purines that can be converted to uric acid, and excess of that uric acid can cause you problems with the joints. But you'll not get excess of this uric acid if you don't have the sugar, because the sugar is the one that actually blocks the excretion of uric acid through the kidneys. So therefore, you get accumulation of uric acid that crystallizes in joints to give you gout. And you are in a good position to explain this because you are a physiotherapist. So the reality is, if I give you fruits, they have sugar, and that sugar, which is fructose, will be converted to uh, uric acid. And again, that sugar will block the excretion of uric acid from the kidneys. Therefore, fruits have a double tragedy in people who have joint issues. So why would we not prefer the vegetables and go for the fruits when you're taking the protein? That is the question that I was asking you. I do prefer, I do suggest everything. But sugar is not exactly sugar. It's a difference between uh, God-made sugar and human-made sugar. What is the difference in the I body? I, I didn't say people. I didn't. I didn't say people should eat fruit because of sugar. I said because of the enzymes, and there is a lot of research about it. So, what is the what is the difference? Uh, what is the what is the difference between the God made sugar and the human made sugar? God made sugar has a lot of things. Had fiber, mm -hmm. had vitamins, had enzymes, mm -hmm. has a lot of things. And man made sugar only toxins. So, when you say God made sugar, you mean the natural sugar, right? Yeah. Give me a give me a good give give me a good example. Like for example, watermelon has a lot of sugar. Thank you very much. So so let's compare a watermelon with sugar, the refined sugar, right? The refined sugar is sucrose. The refined sugar is sucrose, which is basically fructose plus glucose. Watermelon has fructose, which is the same to the fructose that is in refined sugar. So what is the difference when these sugars get to the liver? Does the liver know that this is God made and this is man made? Yes. Does the liver know? The body can recognize. <laughs> the body can recognize what bad and what wrong. No, no, this is not about bad and wrong. This is about the sugars. The, the natural sugar, which is fructose, and the man made sugar, which is fructose. So, does the liver know that this is fructose from sugarcane and this is fructose from uh, the, the, the processed sugar? Does it know? Yeah, the body will know. The so, will know. so what you're telling us is will, what you're telling us is uh, metabolize. what you're telling us is that the fructose from sugar is metabolized differently from the fructose in the synthetic sugar. They have different pathways for metabolism. Yeah, of, course. of course, the fructose will will metabolize as a fat, definitely, and the body and the liver will store it. Of course, but uh, it's totally different because. Because sugar man made is totally different from from God made from God made fruits. But when you absorb them, the the body does not know this is God made or this man made. It is just fructose. Fruits have, fruits have also fruits. Sugar doesn't have fiber. Fruit has fiber. But you don't. You, but nobody absorbs fiber. Have you ever seen somebody absorbing fiber? Is there any metabolic pathway for absorption of fiber? There's none. It's either fructose or glucose. And all the two will be taken through a metabolic channel for either glucose or for fructose. Whether it's natural and God-made or it's synthetic and human-made, there is no difference. When it gets to the liver, it's either glucose or fructose, and therefore glucose goes through the glucose metabolic pathway. Fructose goes through the fructose metabolic pathway. So how then does the body know that this is man-made sugar and this is God-made sugar? Body will know. Body will know. <laughs> man-made sugar, uh, toxins, and people react to it harshly and uh, of course if the human being uh, every human being has a spare of, of limitation of sugar I have a question for you if you have liver yeah. let me just finish my brother Okay. Um, if a human being has liver issues and insulin resistance or diabetic of course we cannot tell them you can have uh, fructose of course not 
this human being who have the issue with liver and uric acid and uh, diabetic, they will avoid all kind sugar. You have a question for yes, me? I have a question. Well, go, go ahead. I yeah, think I, I think that will be better. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I came up to ask you, a human being who can eat, who eat very well, uh, the doctors will tell them they have good liver uh, results, but they, they poop is very white. And they don't have any issues. Like the human being said, I'm not sick, but I have white poop. Why is that? What, what do you mean by white poop? Stool is... They poop, they, they are, they, their stool is white, exactly, yeah. We can't know that until we ascertain the stool. We have to do the, the stool tests. Because again, we stool comes from yeah, what you've been eating. Good, yeah. Because stool is what what you've been eating. Food is the one that ends up making stool. But unless you have a problem with the yeah. liver again that helps you not know, to break down the fat and then you end up with the stool that is covered with fats. That's another story. But white poop... That has to. We have to do some tests for the stool to understand what is happening here. We cannot just judge from the color of the stool because the stool is actually the quality of what you're eating. Yeah, she said she eat very well and she she eat she consume good fats Which, and she also put. Uh, hmm? Most of the times when people say I eat very well, you go ahead and question them and they you realize. There is nothing no, like eating has, very well. She eats good fat like ghee butter and oil, olive oils and uh, um, coconut. She consumes good fats. Okay. She consume white blood, blood fats. What else does she and consume she apart from the fats? Exercise. She could. She eats a lot of vegetables. She eats good meats. She do fasting in between. Uh, she consumes pre- probiotics like ghee. Uh, and then one day she was surprised that she had two knives. The cheek, uh, her stool was very white. And then she went to the doctor, they do a test, and then they said everything is fine. No symptom? Apart from the poop, no other symptom? She doesn't have any pain. She doesn't have any pain in her uh, right side. And then what is, what, what, what is the problem? Because she had no symptoms, she had no discomfort, she just had white stool. What was the problem? Yeah, that's what I said to her. You have to go. She lives in Malaysia. Mm. Uh, ask her to go again to the to the doctor, and they should they should do a, a stool test. And they give her medication for the liver. They said maybe I I know I I thought maybe you know it. That's why. I asked. Why why would they no? Why would they give her medication for the liver when the liver is no problems? They say the liver is okay. I really don't know. That's why I want to ask. I want to know more information about you. Yeah, because from you maybe you would know better. Because there's a lot of things there. I would, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would, I wouldn't just rush to put a conclusion on it. Because again, we have to ascertain what are the parasite levels. We have to ascertain what are the liver functions. We have to ascertain what is the stool test. What are the results that are coming out of there? And then we have to ascertain what does she can eat. She, can what? she can she contact you? Can she? Do you do a consultation or something? Yes, I do consultations. Maybe I can request. Maybe I can refer to you to her. Yes, please. There's a contact of mine on my bio here. You can simply use that to contact uh, me on my WhatsApp. I hope so. We'll do it. Good. Thank you. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you too. You're doing a good job. You're welcome. Thank you.